Oh man, oh man, oh man. It's hotting up in the studio right now. And you know what? Me say interview time. Interview time. We're pulling up right now. And I got Zay Maya in the building. DJ extraordinaire. Host extraordinaire. And just an all-around awesome person. Zay, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. I hope you're having a great day so far. Honestly, I need to pay you. You need to be my you need to be my uh, my 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 what do they call this my hype man <laughs> uh, when you're not doing other things please make sure that i uh, put you on my payroll somewhere i'm there <laughs> i'm there <laughs> i'm well man um how are you doing i'm good i'm good actually excited to have you in the studio mm. someone so knowledgeable so experienced so beautiful it's a great moment right now for bogart man history i'm gonna put the the, the horns in the back <laughs> <laughs> history i'm loving it right now so zay mm. i mean no you're a busy woman you've been doing so much especially i mean you've lifted up hip-hop throughout your career yeah. you're into bigger and better things but before we get into that tell me how did the love for music start the hosting the dj and how did this all begin for you Wow, now I've got to go dig deep hey? right. in, in the memory bank. <laughs> so um, my sisters and I, um, we've got, there's three of us. So my older sister was almost like the one who sort of pioneered us into music. Nice. So she got us into R&B when we were young and then pop when we were a bit older. Dope. A uh, bit of alternative rock, mm-hmm. um, but then what happened is that when I was about 16 and in, in my t- yeah in my teens, high school, I was really you know struggling with a lot of things, not fitting in. Then hip hop became my my go to. I feel you. So yeah, so I would listen to a lot of hip hop artists. I remember the art the album that I I listened to a lot was Get Rich or Die Trying. Dope. Yeah, I used to live on that on that album, and then I used to be like, oh, so I'm not the only one who's trying to you know color outside the lines for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people like Fifty Cent are also going into, uh, going through that, and then I, you know, I, I, I get um, I got a love for hip hop from there. Yeah. Um, and then uh, something happened a few years later. I was at a club. I saw I think it was Milkshake, VG, and Dimples oh, wow. playing. Yeah, yeah. And I said I want to do that too. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went got into Soul Candy. Soul Candy um, put me on. Uh, went to my my DJing course. Mm-hmm. Uh, Graduated two week, two months later, a week later, I got my first gig at Capital and Rosebank, and wow. then it was yeah, it, uh, then yeah, five days later, not even a week later, wow. five days later, <laughs> yeah, my my first gig, Rosebank, Capital, and then it was it was. Uh, it just went crazy from there. I'm loving that. What an amazing first gig to have. I mean, it's like it was in the cards of, of destiny of faith. I mean, five days after graduating, boom, here we go. Gig, you in the building. Some artists, it takes them forever. What was the feeling like? Honestly, I think when you don't know, when you when you, when you you sort of been on your own path and you haven't seen what other people go through, mm-hmm. you think it's normal. Yeah. Uh, and you might uh, underappreciate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then what actually happened is that um, when I started interviewing people like, like yourself, and yeah. other DJs and other artists, I actually realized that I actually had it pretty damn good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so I think then my appreciation meter went up. Yeah. I stopped uh, being a bit of a spoiled brat and actually realizing that I actually had it a lot easier than everybody else. And I'm really grateful, man. I hope God yes. knows um, every day that I'm really grateful for the path that he put me on. Shout out. And I yeah. mean, as well as, as doing all of that, I, I see you as one of the pioneers for the females within the, the DJing sphere when you talk about hip hop. And yeah. I mean, there's very very few female that are doing it on that that type of a level how did it feel being in the industry and you know competing did it feel competitive competing with the gents how did it feel it did mm-hmm. it did and um, I don't know if I'm gonna get into trouble for this but some of my idols became my rivals mm-hmm. which which really really sucked mm-hmm. uh, but when Drake said it I was like okay so I'm not the only one no doubt you no know? doubt um, so that element of it wasn't great uh, because there were people that I'd be like I really look up to you I really think you're so awesome but we are essentially in the community in, in a competitive space right mm-hmm. um, so so that was one downer about it but in terms of the upside of it um, the, there was just really a huge appreciation nice. that here's a woman who plays hip-hop plays it really really well yeah. understands that knows how to read crowds and that type of thing mm-hmm. so I got a lot of more a lot more love for it nice then um, I guess the the issue that I mentioned before mm. and all I can say is that um, you know th- there was a lot that I got from that I got a radio gig nice. I was one of the most booked DJs in the country at some point mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah I mean can't complain too much about that <laughs> that's beautiful that's beautiful how to 
turn some lemonade from the lemons. That's what you did right there. <laughs> and I to. love that. I love that. Yeah. Now, talking about that uh, and, and being a female DJ, let's talk a little bit about the local music within the, the sets that DJs are playing. Now, when mm-hmm. you look at like a Nigerian industry and so on, they keep it almost exclusively right. Nigerian music when they do it. How do you see it in South Africa? How are we progressing within the DJ industry? Are they playing our local artists? Should they be playing more? How's it going? You're talking about hip hop specifically or all well, the genres? Across all genres. Well, I'll definitely say that hip hop, I feel, is a little stagnant mm-hmm. right now mm-hmm. uh, because we had our club hits yeah. at, say, 2015. Maybe all the way about 2018, maybe, yes. okay, 2013 to 2018, let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. I feel like those were really our good years. Yes. All the music was coming out and that type of thing. And then um, something has happened, you know, the tide has turned, essentially. Mm-hmm. I'm a piano, have come on. I'm a piano, you know. There's there's very little international that goes there. Yeah. Everybody who know everybody that you play is coming from the country, which is really great. That's beautiful to see. Yes. Which is really great. Um, and then I I think I think we should definitely continue playing more of our of our local music. The only thing though is that we need new local hip hop. Mm. to come out True. and we need we need that that um is it a uh, is it a cycle if i can put it yes. call it a cycle yes we need the cycle to come up again so that we've got the new music to play because we can only play certain songs i don't want to say which ones because yes. i don't want to sound like i'm <laughs> hating on the artist because i'm not you. but there are certain artists and certain songs that even people will be like if i hear leap song ever again <laughs> yes. i am not i don't want to listen to another hip-hop yeah. set exactly so i don't know if you if, if you've if you've maybe seen or heard something similar as well no i've experienced it a hundred percent i mean I, I complain about it a lot when i go out i'm like dude it's like they copy and pasted their sets from each other <laughs> because it's the same songs over and over i'm tired it's so bad it's, it is and as a hip-hop dj i must say that it's also frustrating because i love playing new music everyone yeah you want to be like okay i got this new joint <laughs> But but um, I don't know what needs to happen. I feel like we um, the people that are the custodians of hip hop right now, especially yeah. our DJs, because yeah. that's where the music really becomes something mm. when the DJs um, run with it. Hundred um, percent. So we are the ones that need to then be uh, say, look, we've got this new. Let's let's actually it must be a conscious move, mm-hmm. a conscious effort. Exactly. Here's new SA hip hop. Let's start again. Let's start pushing it. Or um, and even international, it's fine. Mm. Uh, because another thing is, if you've checked, um, I was I was sub-Saharan African countries, Mm -hmm. Zimbabwe, Mm -hmm. Mozambique, Zambia, um, those countries have also now had their artists come to us. For example, I know yes. I've worked with, uh, I've been approached by Buffalo Soldier. I did a song with Lay Lizzy from Mozambique. Shout out. You know, things like that. And I thought, okay, there's this new market that's out there. But for some reason, I don't know who doesn't want to explore it. Or is there, I don't know what needs to happen, but we need to take advantage of it, of it because it's there. 100%. Uh, and, you know, this is a, a conversation I was having with uh, one of my producers as well, is mm-hmm. that it feels at times that musically we like to segregate ourselves we put ourselves into certain corners and say look south african hip-hop south african people let's just work together and we forget in that this uh, african continent is so large so diverse you're missing out on, on a, such a beautiful market that you could be pushing your music to by keeping yourself locked into one corner mm. but yeah different conversation that for a different time all i want to add to that is there's 1.5 billion people in africa you see just 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 let that sink in one point five billion people yeah you can't be sticking it or you you can't just be keeping to just the 60 odd million that you have down here we actually have to go out as well true and yeah. you know speaking about that and saying expanding horizons i hear that you're expanding your horizons i mean you've opened up from hip-hop and you're you're going into exploring some other sounds and mm-hmm. other things what's going on right now so um before i ever thought or knew i'd be a hip-hop dj mm-hmm. i was always a, a vocalist i wrote wow. lyrics yeah I, I would walk into studio um i did a, a, a qualification in, in in college and then i my mom actually got me um a day job, or not a day job, but like a weekend job at a radio, st- at a studio's um, a recording studio, nice. and I learned from there that I could write. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've always been doing lyrics, whether it's 
mostly house music and you know, whatever, what, whatever I, I got there, I'd write for it. Mm-hmm. So I always thought I'd be a vocalist first. Yes. I was surprised when I became a DJ first. So now it's like I want to go back into that um, and uh, become a full-on artist. Mm-hmm. I'm not leaving hip hop. Yeah. Um, I'm still there, but I want to expand the horizon. Um, and get into a little bit of pop, get into a little bit of um, Afrobeat, um, and be an all-rounder in terms of being a musician as well. Lovely, I love that. You know that that's exactly what I was saying with myself because I started my career as a hip-hop artist. Uh, mm. That was my bread and butter. And um, as I started growing as an artist and and as a person maturing, I had mm. a daughter, and you know I started looking at, at music differently and saying, why am I just locking pigeon holding myself to hip-hop? Mm. There is a whole world. If I call myself a musician, I should. Be making music and not locked Correct. to a genre mm. reggae opened up the doors and so many different avenues so I, I think that you're on the perfect path right now mm. if you had to choose a perfect feature to jump on some pop with you who would it be and a producer a feature and a producer those two who would it be well actually i don't know if i should say this now but we've actually got an idea we want we want you on something let's get it <laughs> <laughs> there's a track my sister and i actually had a meeting last week i think during the weekend sometime yeah. and she was like you know what actually you that second verse is a song called really want to call you okay that is like um, it was we were trying to do afrobeat but it's like afrobeat meets a bit of enya yes. in it um and then she was like take out the second verse put Don Dada on the on oh, on, on the second verse. Shout out to so that's the one that's the one feature uh, that we absolutely have to have. And then in terms of uh, producers, I don't have anybody um, I'd say well known as such because I've actually been um, uh, blessed with up and coming producers nice. and people that uh, you know have not been given an opportunity but mm. they're coming here with something really really real and really proper nice. so for example there's a guy that I'm working with now his name is uh, Treasured Soul mm-hmm. he's actually produced a lot of my music so if I could get you and Treasured Soul on one song I'm with you. then you know what at least if I've got your buy in I need to get his buy in and then I think I'm going to have a smash hit oh man Case that's be beautiful <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you 100% shout out yeah. I am down anytime just let me know we'll get mm-hmm. it done mm-hmm. i'm so excited because what you're doing is is the way that i envision music going is that at this point everything is is becoming a hybrid it's mission mashing sounds together Correct. you look at ama piano that's what they've been doing uh, hip-hop and reggae they also cross in boundaries where do you mm-hmm. see the future of south african music heading towards right now look i think um there are people who've got the right idea mm-hmm. about it but I think what we were mentioning earlier is we need to have more openness to it yeah. um, I do be- I, I do think that it's if anybody wants to, doesn't want to jump on that train mm-hmm. they are going to lose out True. and also why do you not just want to cross pollinate because if you cross pollinate I get your audience you get yes. my audience bigger market bigger market True. you don't have to do ho- half the work exactly. that you know that Don Dada would have done for example in my case um, so I, I'd say that um, it's definitely going to go in that direction. I mean, if you look at it now, a guy like Maporisa, mm-hmm. uh, Maporisa is, is very, um, I, I don't want to call him the pioneer of that, but he's really in the, in the thick of that. Yeah. If that guy could do something, he, he, he could create anybody that he wants to work with, mm-hmm. for example. Mm-hmm. True. Um, so I think it's, it, it's up to people like them who maybe could, who've got the power to maybe like open up a window. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say that people um, who don't have as much power or as, as much experience exposure must then you know not try it in their own capacity in their own way for example Um, and why I'm saying this is with your story that we're just talking about now Mm -hmm. how you went on a show you were heard by someone you were then given an opportunity and you are busy blowing up on the Caribbean and we don't even know about it I mean come on (laughs) look at that you know so I think people also need to remember the power that they have but if you've got the power already in terms of like you've got the influence then take the advantage take the the opportunity and run with it you have to you have to and you know speaking about that it, it you just brought to mind something I've, I've also been thinking about a lot lately and that's mm-hmm. just the support that we get within the art sector because you have so many people doing amazing things a DJ Maporisa he was on uh, is it Stone Boy's brand new yes, album which yes. they're saying is, is unlocked for the Grammys right now mm-hmm. um, we've got Black Coffee also doing stuff with Drake yes. we've got so many amazing things um, was it Anati who 
wrote uh, or, or helped to produce on Beyonce's song. So we, we're doing so many things. Do you think that we're receiving the type of support that we should be getting and recognition that we should be getting? Because a lot of these things, it feels like it flies under the radar. <sighs> Gosh, you're gonna get us into trouble. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna get me into trouble because um, the answer to that is no. Mm. Um, I think if we and and we're not even gonna go that far. Let's look at what happened with COVID mm. when um, when when all the, the entertainment sector was shut down mm. essentially, mm. right? The I felt like the arts department could have done more yeah. than what they they did for us or didn't do for us in mm. a lot of cases. Um, and I'm not the only one who said that. Yeah. Um, and and so the answer to that is no. Um, and then I think that. You know, there the, the have to be people that maybe there has to be a change in terms of the people that are aware. Because I feel like the, one of the biggest issues that causes that is that the people that are in those positions that are running um, the, 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 the departments are not necessarily art people. Yes. I don't know if I'm right or no, if I'm wrong. No, th that's how I feel as well. It feels like they're coming more from a corporate structure and yes. trying to impose that onto the arts onto than the art, being yes. an artist knowing what art needs. So, for example, if you know, I'll, I'll mention another radio station where I used to work at YFM. I mm -hmm. hope I'm not, you know, imp um, impeding on anything. Mm -hmm. But with the station manager there and was an artist and was a DJ himself mm -hmm. when he became station manager. Okay. Um, and then he was then able to teach or, or, or to basically help the art the the djs that, who started with the station guys like um Kabzela, uh okay. guys like well uh oh gosh monday in them a okay. lot of them have since passed now yes. um to basically help them to build a model that can work within a corporate spa i mean um a corporate well within a corporate uh space yes. but work for artists as Makes well sense. so he was able to teach them guys this is how you run a business within the space this is yeah. the opportunities that you need to go for and he was able to then get those opportunities to happen as well mm. so we need people who are um who, who understand how art works but then can also say but let's build a model within the corporate structure that will support our artists if that can happen within our um, arts and culture department watch us fly right I yeah. believe that too I believe yeah. that too and you know what you also speaking about artist development how you believe in in working with people that perhaps have not had the opportunities but have the talents and have the the passion yeah. I mean you produce a treasured soul uh, perhaps unknown to many but a man that that's quite talented as you're saying mm. um, now when you look at the skills development and artist development do you think enough of that is happening and this is not talking about the government but talking about us from artist to artist do we lift each other up enough do we support each other enough do we mentor I'd say yes but I'd say there's a lot more that needs to happen mm. um, I think the whole your art your idols become your rivals thing is a real thing right um, and I think that if you're in been put in a position whereby you can mentor someone else do that because yeah. that's a, skills development and skills transfer is actually such a great thing because yeah. you might think that you're going to teach me how to do something mm. but in actual fact you might learn something from me as well 100%. which is what happened with uh, w when I would um, let art, uh, young artists come into the station um, and they would you know showcase their music next mm. thing I'm now then getting exposed to another group of um, like a, a, an, an, an emerging market yes. and in and this emerging market Market actually could be something that I could grow and profit and well, not to say profit from, but grow and 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 exploit to the point to the benefit of everybody else. 100%. And I did have an opportunity like mm -hmm. that. So I think a lot of people need to not be worried that okay, if these new kids or this new artist or this new DJ or this new producer come, you never know what the next person. They might be the reason why, you know, the stream these dreams we're talking about. They might be the ones that are actually going to uh, fulfill those dreams on our behalf. Hundred percent. I mean, mm. when I think about. Uh, Hip hop and and northern hip hop specifically, I think about my boys like Ricky Rick, uh, the Les. Uh, mm. When we were all coming up, I mean, a very close knit group of guys. And I mean, you look at what they did to hip hop; they, they really monetized it. They took it into the corporate spaces, getting yes. it onto billboards and working with huge brands. They took hip hop to another stratosphere. Now, when you look at what's going on with hip hop right now, uh, there's a whole bunch of youths, the A. Reese, Nasty mm. C. They're mm. coming in. Do you think that they may Maintaining this momentum that has been built on, or or bettering it, or are we starting to slack a little bit? Is South African hip hop losing a little bit of its momentum? Not to place blame on any artists, <laughs> not blaming anyone, just 
you know how things are i think hip hop as a whole um lost momentum to a certain extent um i think we spoke about it earlier on um and i think you know i, I don't want to be too specific about who's not doing what or who is doing what mm-hmm. but i would say that the opportunity exists so i'd say the talent is there it is and um in all honesty i don't know how many hip, how many emails i receive on the daily nice. and and my and my um what do they call this thing and my whatsapp that goes crazy because mm. everybody what just wants to drop a new song it's got this and this and the talent is there it is the talent is there so i don't know if it's just a case of there's a tide that we need to you know there's a cycle that we need to let finish i don't mm. know if it's if people believe in in things like that yeah. or if you know we there, there is something more that can be done i'm not sure what it is right now it's an interesting thing because you look at for example in zimbabwe they were doing dance hall now mm. They called it mimic hall because they said that these guys sounded exactly like Jamaicans they were mimicking them and they took a step back and they 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 reevaluated it and they mm. created something that they called zim dance hall with a mixture of indebele a mixture of yes, shona yes. it's it's another complete vibe so now they've got their own specific genre you look at Nigeria how they came about with afro taking the sounds of fela kuti and combining it with a little bit of a reggae spice mm. over here and there and now we have afro south africa we've done similar with ama piano taking house music giving our own little spin on it drum as well mm-hmm. with hip hop where do you see us going no, i don't know <laughs> i know hip hop is so stressful right now because yeah. um i don't know if you ever saw that article when i think rick ross was in the country mm-hmm. and rick ross went and oh my gosh he said he actually literally threw so much shade at us and he said that the only reason why he did a song i think it was with p squared or i remember that is two djs or something like they that they even did a video right yeah mm-hmm. they did a music video they out on the beach somewhere in, yes. in a yacht and he said the only reason why he went there is because he felt like it, there was something different whereas here we were just doing what what we, he came from. What, what, yeah, exactly. He was just like, we, we, we sound, you know, some we sound like we're either from Atlanta or trying to sound like we're coming from Atlanta yeah. or trying to sound like we're coming from the US yeah. or whatever the situation might be yeah. and there was a lot of shade that is and, that is and we were I, I was just like oh okay right even I'm feeling it right now <laughs> <laughs> so i think that um maybe the musicality of it can change because mm. i think that in terms of hip hop hip hop is is um the the hip hop has got a genet uh, has got a certain you know there's genetics about it mm-hmm. there's rhymes there mm-hmm. you got to have a message mm-hmm. there's got to be um you, you got to be able to write your own stuff for example 100%. so maybe the musicality like the sound but in terms of you rapping on it fine no yeah. problem with that yeah. but but don't duplicate a trap beat or mm. don't you know don't have a trap beat have a have a south african hip hop beat but then we need to find what that is which is why when i had a similar conversation with someone else we were like maybe that's what quieto was and uh, that is my argument as well is that quieto is actually south african hip hop hip-hop, exactly that's what i say <laughs> <laughs> exactly because even if you think about it if, if you listen to it before quieto became um what it, what it was when it was commercialized mm-hmm. a lot of the artists actually were aspiring hip hop artists yes. before yes. and then they were like okay this is actually a little bit easy on the ear mm-hmm. because hip hop at that time wasn't picking up at all right uh, no they, they hated it to be honest <laughs> <laughs> people hated it exactly hip hop at that time was in the early 90s late 80s it wasn't really picking up but what happened is that when they came and they said here's quieto you can literally take quieto beats and put and you can rap on it of course. which is what we were doing if you remember mm-hmm. Just before, uh, I'd say 2018, 2019, a lot of our hip hop artists were f- sampling quite the beats. The resurgence, exactly. yes, exactly. Yes. And I thought, wow, guys, Beautiful. this is gonna work. Yeah. This is where we're gonna go. And then I'm not sure what happened after that. So I was yeah. also disappointed. But you know, I have to give a big shout out to the boys in Muff Town because they mm. continue to impress and create their own unique sound that nobody else has. I- I'm loving what's going on out there in Muff Town. Mm. Um, the Mutswako vibe, yeah, the Mutswako just vibe amazing, proper. beautiful. Uh, even you, you look in what you call it, is the KZN. They've also got their own style of hip hop that they also pull. I, I don't know what they call it, yes, but it's yes. their own vibe. I'm loving it. I just feel that that. that that Joburg is because we're such a, a, a metropolitan hub and there's so many people coming from all over the world mm-hmm. our music is also reflective of that we try and cater for everyone which is to the detriment of our own sound i was going to say something similar um 
I remember having a conversation with um, guys from Nigeria. So they were doing, they were here in the country, and I remember asking them, saying to them, guys. Um, Afrobeat is such a big thing. Mm-hmm. Why do you guys feel that you need to come to South Africa in order for you to blow? Yes. And they were like, because South Africa is considered as the New York of Africa. Yes. And I said, okay, well, that's a great thing. But then the other problem is that now are we not trying too much to be like the New York in the U.S. Yes. That we are tr- we are for- we are forgetting to formulate our own New Yorkness That's what's happening. or our own Jobergness. Yeah. That then will you know, um, and uh, and it was a conversation we had. But obviously, you know, it's just one of those you have over a drink or two and then no, yeah, move on from we'll it. Move on from it. But yeah, uh, yeah very important conversation though because it's it's. It's something that's not had enough speaking about what direction are we going into because Mm -hmm. as artists we all want to see this industry succeed and become better but there's not one clear direction that we are all heading in. Everyone has their own ideas and they're spread out in it and I think if there was a bit more unity we would see a lot more better results in my opinion. If you That's why Muff Town is so strong. Those guys are so united. They're always together. Mm -hmm. Double HP to um, what is that other brother's name? Um Coolie China, Coolie China yes. that whole movement they support yes. each other. Yeah. Joe Berg is not really like that. <laughs> not really like. I that. think also if you look at the nature of what Joe Berg is, Joe Berg is is, is, is what do they call it? Joe Hasselberg. Yes. Um, so we here to make money. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of dog eat dog world situation. Yep. Um, so if I can get ahead, um, and it doesn't matter at all costs. Mm. So I think the camaraderie element of it doesn't. Maybe Joe Berg is not the best place to have a camaraderie no. if that makes sense yeah you yeah. know so maybe what we should uh, uh what we should maybe con- uh, consider is african hip-hop true maybe if we were to i mean Im- imagine think of yourself I, I don't know if you've got any issues with any of these artists but mm-hmm. think of a, a, a track with you and cresta buffalo soldier lay lazy shannon bow it would and be amazing s- and, s- and think what 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 would that actually sound like and, oh. and 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 maybe if we were to have african hip-hop mm-hmm. as opposed to south african hip-hop and you know Zimbabwean hip hop mm. or you know Zambian or whatever Mozambican because yeah. ex- for example what I'm saying with, with a guy like Lay Lizzy I was shocked when he approached me I wasn't really too aware of who he was mm. but when the song came out it went to number three within three weeks oh wow in Mozambique amazing and I remember thinking to myself this is a movement that we need to take advantage of exactly and God willing you and I we Maybe. won't do the same thing. We should do that. I, I feel you. <laughs> I <laughs> yeah. feel you. I feel you. Yeah. And that is, I think, you have hit the nail on the head because collaboration is one of the most strongest uh, tools in the armory of an artist. This is how mm. you can build your career and your fan base the quickest Correct. by utilizing each other's strengths. Correct. And I don't think a lot of young artists are doing enough of it. If you had to give some advice to the young artists out there, just one piece of advice for mm. the young lady coming up wanting to walk in the shoes of Zay Maya, what would you tell her to do? Well, number one, you need to know why you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Because the industry gets very hard. True. And uh, also, um, especially, if I'll, I'll, I'll speak to women specifically, because um, the industry is not ga- uh, geared for women specifically. Yes. Uh, you know that it's easy to be taken advantage of and that type of thing. So that's something, that's why you need to know why you're doing it. And you need to be really good. True. Like, don't come here and you like, oh, well, I can kind of press, I can kind of mix, I can <laughs> kind of write. Because then you don't want to be trolled for things like that. Already the, the world is difficult enough for women. So mm. women, you need to work twice as hard to get half their recognition. Oh, it's that. unfortunate, but at this point, that's, that's, something, that's how it is. Mm. Right? So you need to know why you're doing it. And I have to echo your sentiments that if you can find people that are like-minded, then maybe do the collaborations because you never know where it's where it's gonna go. And let's tr- and try and do an African version of what it is that you that you want because that's I mean Africa is 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 the world is is the has got the youngest population as well. Yes. In case people don't know, 60% of the African po- uh, African population is in the youth. Youth. Exactly. Yeah. So if you don't know the stat now, you know. Yeah. So. Um, um, so that that is something that you need to think of. If we are in the if we are the youth, we, we're the youngest nation or the youngest uh, you know yeah the n- youngest nation in the world right now. That means that essentially the we can influence what's going to happen of in course. the next fi- uh, fifteen to twenty years, for yeah. example. Yeah. So think of it on that um, sense. Think of it long term, and also try as much as possible not to b- box yourself, as yeah. we were talking about it earlier mm-hmm. on that 
collaborate, 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 collaborate and see what happens. 100%. Yeah. And also, uh, I just want to also add something that I find quite interesting. We should not be shy of using each other's sounds. I mean, I see artists in Nigeria jumping onto I'm a piano beats. I see artists in South Africa jumping onto Afro. Mm. We need to look at more of the sounds in Africa because I'm sure there's more than two. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And I mean, look, I mean, let's use Burner Boy as an example. Yeah. Burner Boy literally has hit singles with two songs one is the sample and the other one is literally they gave him the beat let's yeah. let's let's be honest 100%. that's sitting on top of the world thing mm. literally i'm sure he spoke to brandy's people and were like listen i want this beat so and look, they were you like see sure. what we did with the first one <laughs> see right? what we did with tony Braxton's yeah, stuff. let's, do let's that. take brandy's stuff yeah. Let, and look i mean the song because the song already exists mm-hmm. and because it was a hit when brandy did it all those many years ago mm-hmm. he's it, it's a guaranteed hit exactly you know it's a exactly. guaranteed hit so i think i love that idea actually and maybe if i have somebody that i know maybe just like get to i don't know double hp's people and be like i know you know out of respect can i please get a specific beat and see if i can you know like a music and lights or whatever yes. and then make a beat out of that and it would it should be an instant hit and that actually also cuts down the amount of time that you can have to mark market and PR and True. all the work that you would have had done. True. And, and it helps to also keep his legacy alive because a new audience is going to hear it, hear it in a different way. Mm. He'll get his royalties or his share of it. So it keeps the family on getting something. Mm. So it's a beautiful thing for everybody to do. I think yeah. that it's, it's like Ubuntu in music. It's that type of vibe. And speaking of that, because we know now I'm going to interview you. Yeah, yeah. Because we know that, um, you know, entertainment um can be a very tough industry do you think it's overly idealistic for us to think that ubuntu could authentically exist within music well i don't think that it's idealistic because ubuntu is the cultural beliefs that we've been brought up with as africans so to translate that from just your everyday life into a little aspect like music shouldn't be difficult but it becomes difficult when you have to factor in the human elements of greed mm. of, of you know there's so many different things that, that, that people want that removes away from what ubuntu used to be and what it does now become now it's become a power term it's, it's a power it's term not yeah. anything that's Somebody, practical a tattoo on someone's arm 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. so yeah, yeah. It, i wish it was in a, in an ideal world it probably would be mm. but um in the world that we live in today eh, not right now not right now not right now. but it is something that we can aspire to well we should be because that that is the only way to uplift each other i was having a conversation with my cousin last night actually and talking about how music began as a single based uh, idea people used to r- grow record a single mm-hmm. release the single promote the single yeah. when they have shows they'll perform cover versions of somebody else's and then end with their hit single right. and then it progressed from there i think it was the beatles who introduced the concept of the album that's right. where the whole idea came from people saw it as a beautiful thing everyone started making albums and as we sit right now we've gone right back into the single age because of all the streaming and so on mm. people are not interested in albums i'll listen to your album in 30 minutes even 20 because i'm just skipping through mm. skipping through mm. singles is what it's about so music is going in one big loop if we had to sit together and help each other grow then you can actually that loop you can make it break at some point something new can happen within that loop because yeah. unity is what we haven't had before yeah but right now it's just going to continue doing that big old big old circle mm. because nobody is really doing anything different mm. and who do you think should be pioneering that that well, pattern that you all have? of us all of, us. all of us i mean if you look at what i'm doing with my music i'm busy with jamaica i'm working with the south african artists uh, i'm working with kwaito artists i'm doing hip-hop i'm i'm trying to do anything and everything that's musical and south african music because that'll elevate all of us when you go into the international scene you're now representing south africa it's like being an olympian yeah. you know what i mean so yeah. i'm doing whatever i can to lift everybody and if we had to all do that then we'd all be in a stronger position right. especially as practitioners we'd have more money in our pockets but because one dude wants more than the other someone has to suffer mm-hmm. and that's painful it is something that i spoke about as well i'm um, off air many many times and i'll be doing my show and mm-hmm. i remember being told that 
I'm too nice and I want everybody to be happy. And I said, guys, it's a, it's a sustainability model that we need to create because mm. this whole thing of artists, you're going to be relevant for seven years or five to seven years. Yeah. And then after that, um, you know, you're not relevant anymore. Um, and there's nothing long term that's going to help you stay, um, you know, afloat, for lack yeah. of a better word. Mm. You don't have retirement. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the saddest things, how many of our artists have been passing away? Legendary artists have passed away and we had to have lack of, a, of another expression, a GoFundMe, yeah. you know, for our artists. And I was, yeah, yeah, and I was saying, uh, yeah, the donations. And I was saying, guys, we need to create a sustainability model. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think um, just to, you know, echo what you have to say about greed and all of those things is that people would say, I'm too nice. I'm too ideal. One, actually, one of my co-hosts said that. <laughs> and I think that's when our friendship ended. And I yeah. said to you, <laughs> well, I can't talk to you because you clearly don't see the vision of the whole right. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a little unfortunate, but hopefully people like us can can you know start um, that conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think the most important thing is that not just talk about it, but actually live it. Yes, as well. implement it. Obviously, we need to to do something different because right now we're losing so many of our people. When we look at depression, mm. we look at all these different things that are affecting music, and nobody really well they care about it, but they don't care as deeply as we do because it's personal these are people that we we grew up with and we've yeah. seen the afflictions they're going through and it's totally avoidable it's it's us that are afflicting them yeah so if we can change our ways we can help to actually heal the industry we would see a, a, a lot less of these mental illnesses yeah. financial breakdowns and, and and everything else that's going on i think that the power is really in our hands as artists because uh, there's too many times that we look at the government for support the government can not do everything mm. we have to also take responsibility and control ourselves mm. and just one last part about especially with mental health mm -hmm. um why artists should not i don't think people should be afraid to be open about it mm -hmm. um i think mental health is something that we can't afford not to talk about at this point um and why i'm saying this is because when i would approach when i had approached a few artists to talk about mental health a lot of them would say things like i don't want to appear weak mm. you know that mm. no i get affected by depression and whatnot and there's actually a chat that is is on a, that needs to happen very soon and i remember i did get some custodians from from hip-hop specifically to say yes we will talk about it yes we will talk about it but i, I had a lot of people say ah it's gonna make me look like I, I, you know I'm, mm. I'm a weak I'm a weak ass something and then I thought to myself okay if, if that thought pattern exists that might also be one of the biggest hindrances that we have to have these conversations so maybe artists if you're listening um, or anyone who's listening for that matter if you maybe let's start changing that thought pattern and then we might actually have um, you know some sort of daylight in terms of solving some of the issues that we have 100% I agree yeah. with you yeah. oh, Zay, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you I want to know your social media handles if people want to follow you they want to book you want to get in touch just say hey, we love the vibes how can they go about doing that <laughs> yeah I'm um, at Zaymaya Music so that's Z-A-I-M-A-Y-A M-U-S-I-C I have to <laughs> <laughs> remember how to spell music yeah Zaymaya Music that's Instagram and Twitter and then um, my Facebook is still DJ Zaymaya so that's at DJ Z-A-I-M-A-Y-A -A -A. and then I've got Leona Media which is my company with my sisters uh, Leona Media at Gmail dot com and you'll speak with Namsha she's our PR she's the boss basically nice she gets everything done yes ma'am yes ma'am <laughs> yeah, I'm loving do. that family business with the sister and you know for those that, that obviously you can see us we got the sister right here in the studio mm -hmm. y'all got it on lock like you doing the interview she's doing the visuals it's going <laughs> down out here so that's beautiful to see yeah yeah and then um, I don't know I don't want to be the person who's you know doing because I'm also a radio host at some point but can I just quickly give a, a young shout out about oh, the single please go for it <laughs> <laughs> actually I almost forgot to talk about this uh, single is coming well has come out it came out two weeks ago it's called No Casualties nice it's the pop version okay uh, the slow version uh, but the is an Amapiano version coming out of it as well. Fire. We finally found the sound. It's called Pop Mapiano, so Love you'll it. hear it. Love it. So I'm hoping that at some point we'll be able to come through, drop it here, maybe play it in a mix or two, 
as well. I was well. about to ask if we could please have it for Bogart men because we <laughs> need to be playing it, supporting it. But I also like the idea of a mix. We need to get you back and get you on the ones and twos. We've got some beautiful mixes mm. in the corner. Mm. I don't know how to use them, but I'm sure you do. So yeah. it's going to go down. No, honestly, I walked in. I was like, oh my gosh, you got CDJs. Okay, nice. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. So <laughs> connect those things. And then, yeah, um, I'll definitely come through and make it work. Well, you heard it here first. It's a date. We're going to get it popping on Bogart Men Radio. It's such a beautiful thing. Zay, I'm so honored. Thank you so much for coming through. Really enjoyed your presence. Yeah. Love and respect. And we wish you all the best with your career. Thank you very much. So much fun. Haven't been on a radio station in a very long time. So it was really nice to be on the side of the mic. And yeah, thank you for the opportunity. And I wish you all the best in everything that you have uh, planned as well. Oh, blessings, blessings. This is a good vibe here on Bogart Men Radio. And we're going to keep it going. Reggae music to the world. I'm going to turn it up and let you guys just vibe a little bit. Ja Rastafari. Rastafari.